Hey everybody, so glad to have you here today. And the focus is a new brand from Sephora called Pretty Vulgar. And this line, I believe I first heard about it on Allure. And they were saying like the new line that's gonna change the face of makeup at Sephora or something like that. And I think it actually is going to be sold in Sephora stores. And the packaging is definitely eye-catching. Maybe that's one reason why they think this would sell well in a store because everything from the outer boxes is really adorable and then on the inside it's just a really pretty packaging design. There's lots of little birds and flowers and it almost looks a little old-fashioned in some ways but it's still really pretty and then the names of products as you may notice as we go along can be a little bit more edgy I guess. Now there are three different eye palettes in this line and I got all of those. That was one of the biggest points of intrigue for me but there's also some face products and and lip products. So I just ordered a little sampling of what they had to offer. It's nearly a full face. Now this is not a first impressions video. I have been trying this stuff out for a while now, so I wanted to apply it and talk about it as I go so I can really explain the application and stuff. But I'll definitely touch on my past experiences wearing this so you know a little bit more about the way it wears. First product is this Blurring Beauty Mousse, and I have this in the shade Walking on Eggshells. It's kind of like the same design as the IT Cosmetics CC Cream, only you're getting a little bit less here. This is uh, one fluid ounce, and with IT Cosmetics you get 1.08 fluid ounces. And I've used this in a few different ways. I've used this just as a like traditional foundation. So, you know, I'll apply a moisturizer and a primer and stuff beforehand and then put this on. But lately, I've really been paying attention to what the claims are here on the box, and it says that it works as an all-in-one moisturizer, primer, and lightweight foundation. Our Face Perfecting Blurring Beauty mousse is incredibly blendable, transcending from a light coverage skin smoothing foundation to featherweight second skin application. So this is not um, intended to be a real full coverage product here, so keep that in mind. But when you think about what it says it will do, you know, the moisturizer, primer, lightweight foundation all in one, it kind of reminds me of a lot of the reasons that I might reach for my It Cosmetic CC Cream. So I'll pump some out here. There's some little air bubbles sometimes when I pump out, so even though I'm going for a full pump, I don't always get it. Now it's having trouble pumping anything out at all. Uh oh. There. Okay. So this shade, when I got it in, I thought, oh, that might be, you know, a little bit dark on my skin. But for the fact that this is so lightweight and has some definite sheerness to it, it really, it's not a problem. You know, you'll notice as I blend it out, it just kind of blends right back into my skin tone. I've used a beauty blender with this, and I think that takes away a lot of coverage. So a Sigma F80 brush is what I've found uh, to work better. But no matter what I do, it is really pretty light coverage. I mean, you see that one side blended out, and I can see all my little freckles still through this and I'm not saying it's really a bad thing you know I don't think I'm in a place right now with my skin where I always need like the heaviest heaviest coverage stuff but at the same time if I'm going for this quick and easy one step thing I know that it cosmetics covers better, plus it has a fantastic SPF in it. So it's kind of a no-brainer for me that I would go for the IT Cosmetics over this one. I guess the thing about this is that the texture is a bit unique. It is kind of like light and mousse-like, but yet um, not as dry as some mousses you might typically think of. And whether I moisturize under this or not, I tend to get pretty oily around my nose, no matter what. It just really does not have great staying power, and I can see it a lot like as I'll wear it throughout a day and look at myself close up toward the end of the day, I can totally still see that I've got concealer under my eyes, but it looks like everything else is kind of worn down. That's kind of odd. Next thing is this concealer, and it looks like a totally typical doe foot applicator type concealer. And this says our buildable undercover gel serum concealer will cover up your problem areas no matter how big or small. Delicate formula keeps skin moisturized. Now this I have in the shade called Veil of Secrecy. It's a really good like skin tone match for me. It's not necessarily like gonna brighten me off the charts, you know, because it's not a lot lighter than my skin, but it's more of a match, and that's okay. And I have been applying this you know, pretty much all throughout my under eye area and down the sides of the nose, kind of tackling some of the redness that I have around my nose and just anywhere else where I have any little 
blemishes or whatever. Then I've been using my Sigma P80 brush to blend this out. And I find that the coverage is really quite nice. It's not quite as um, thick as a Tarte Shape Tape. But it honestly might kind of rival that type of coverage. Like I've been really pleased at the way that can tackle some pretty dark under eye circles right here in my inner corner without reaching for any sort of peachy corrector to go alongside this. And the finished texture of it, you know, once you get done blending it out, it's not like screaming to be set with something. You know, it's not super sticky concealer. I don't think you'd absolutely have to set it. Um, but it does have just like a, a little bit of, of a tacky feel there. If you're one who likes to smooth everything out with the setting powder, you might want to use a little setting powder with this. I kind of like to pull in my foundation brush again just to make sure that the tone of the concealer gets all nicely blended in with the tone of the foundation. But what I'm going to do is just pull in the lightest amount of some setting powder here, the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder, just with my little Smashbox brush. I think this is the number 10. Yeah. This is great for just a little bit of under eye setting powder. I just think this really locks in the concealer, gives it really nice staying power. And then because I know this um, foundation really struggles to last if I don't set it, I'm going to just apply a little bit of that same loose powder all over my skin. Honestly, it still wears down pretty quick even if I do put some powder over it, but hey, I tried, right? And I don't know that I talked much about the finish on my skin with that um, foundation on, but it's just pretty natural. It's not super glowy, it doesn't blow me away like looking looking flat and matte and dry. It's just kind of a natural like middle ground. Now the next thing I chose to get from this line is a blush and the blush packaging is like super gold and it's the Make Them Blush blush in the shade called Pretty Witty. And sometimes I really enjoy just these neutral colored blushes, although this one looks exactly like a bronzer. Like if you didn't tell me and you just sat this in my lap, I'd say, oh, okay, I've got a bronzer. It has maybe the teeniest bit of a like rosy, tint to it, just a little bit in there, um, and maybe a little bit of a satin finish as well. So I'm going to just use my blush brush here from Milani. It is rather pigmented, so a little bit goes a long way. And I'm just going to apply that here on like the outer part of the apple of my cheek. As it shears out, you see how it looks a little bit more rosy than you would have expected. Right, a nice natural flush. I don't think it's the most unique uh, type of blush ever, but it does seem to be nice quality. Very pigmented, so it's the kind of thing I want to just build up little by little on my skin. Now, I didn't get a brow product from this line. I just went ahead and used my Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil number four. I applied some Milani eyeshadow primer, and then I'm going to use the Pretty Birdie palette here. This is the really colorful one, and all of the palettes, while they all look different on the outside, they have this same kind of birdcage design on the inside. So we're looking at 12 color eye palettes, no matter which one you pick. This one has four matte shades. This one right up here is matte. These two really rich warm shades here are matte. And then also there's a dark teal. So I think you could go like about a zillion different directions with this palette. So I'm just gonna jump in and see where it takes us. First off, I am gonna take this shade right here called Lay and that I'm just gonna take all over my lid up into the crease just get a little bit of a base going here this is just like a nice creamy beige color there is a nice mirror um, on these palettes as well like you can see your entire face in there so that's nice then i think i'm going to lightly apply this taupey shade called songbird to my crease it does have a little shimmer but i just want something there to build up a little depth to start out with and the birds are singing outside my window here as the sun comes up. The sun is starting to rise a little bit earlier, so I'm getting a little more light in my room. Yay! See, right now it's 6.03 and there's already some light outside. Next up, I want to work with this goldeny shade up here called Ego. And I'm going to pat that right here on my lid. I'm kind of focus it in on the center of the lid. 
These shadows in general are pretty nice to work with. I mean, there's nice pigmentation. There's a little bit of, um, I don't know, dry flakiness to some. Like you have to be a little bit careful as you're patting them on and don't be surprised to see some fallout from them, even if you do tap the excess off your brush. I'm gonna use a little bit of this shade called Free. This seems to be really shimmery and shiny right around the inner corner. And you're thinking, all right already, use one of the fun colors. It's coming. It's just tough because I've been using my Viseart uh, Theory palettes a lot lately and Viseart to me is just becoming like the mother of all eyeshadows and you know their quality is just impeccable. Doesn't matter if it's matte or shimmer or super metallic. Like they all apply so consistently and so nicely. So when I dip into these shades and it's like well it's kind of dry, kind of flaky with some of these shimmers. I have to work sort of hard at times to build it up exactly where I want it on the eyes. And Busy Art is a tough act to follow, that's all I can say. But I'm going to pull in this shade called Formation right here. This is a matte, rusty color, it looks super rich. And I'm going to pat this on the outer part of my lid. There are just so many colors in this palette. I mean, there are many, many ways you could you could go with this. What I think I want to do is use one of the other colors as kind of a bright pop on my lower lash line. Now I'm flipping my brush a little bit and, and trying to get some of that color in my crease. And a lot of times when I'm working with shades in this way, you know, I first focus on just getting the shadow where I want it, and then I'll come back and, you know, soften the edges and blend it out. Taking just a bare brush, buffing out over the edge, but trying not to interfere with any of the color that's on my lid. But that rusty color looks really pretty as it shears out. And then while I'm at it, I'm gonna take a little bit more of this um, lay shade here and just more deliberately place that right under my brow. And then, you know what, I'm dying to use a little bit of this color too. This is called Snitch. It's a nice like ruby red. And I think I will do that just right here in the crease. I'm working it up just little by little because I know it can be bold. You know, you might not glance at this thing and think that's the warmest palette of all time, but my goodness, can you come up with a really pretty warm look just using some of these neutrals, you know, with the gold and the, the rust and the red. Ooh, my eyes are on fire with this look. Okay, nice. And then I think I just want to pat on a bit more of this color called Ego, just because as I've blended and applied the other shade, I don't want it to like overtake my whole lid. And some of these shimmers, while they can really pack a punch in a swatch, they don't necessarily blow me away in application on the eyes. But I mean, it's still pretty. They don't hang together quite as much as like a, a Viseart shimmery shade does. Now I wanna give this look just a really clean edge across the upper lash line. I'm gonna use some black liquid liner. I'm using Jordana Color Envy and Black Envy. Um, I did not purchase an eyeliner from this line. I probably should have. I just, um, I recently have gone through my drawers here in my room and I've been redoing my storage and I realized just how many eye products I have that I need to use. So I'm trying not to bring a ton of new eyeliners and mascaras into my life right now. Because that is the kind of thing, you know, mascaras, eyeliner, brow products, I'll go through that stuff faster than anything, but I still just have a lot of it. One of these days you're gonna see an empties video and be like, dang! <laughs> I love that there's such a bird theme with this brand and you know, you get up and use it in the morning on a spring morning and the birds are just chirping right outside the window. There was a woodpecker on the roof a couple of days ago and it was so funny because it was like the moment I turned my camera on to shoot a video, it's like, -na 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 -na. it must have been like right above my head, but then it stopped. It's like it got its fill. It's like, this isn't a tree, okay, I'll leave. A decent little wing here. Next up, I'm going to work in the green and I think some of the dark teal on the lower lash line. And I'm gonna do my waterline with a pretty bold green liner. I've got this one from ColourPop and it's in the shade called Teaspoon. So I'm just gently pulling down on the lower lid and applying that to the waterline. And I'm gonna get a little bit on my 
natural lash line. Not a ton because I really want you to see the way the shadow goes on there and what kind of intensity it has, but I just want to blur the line of it all. This teal right here called Nevermore, get a little bit of that. And that's going to be the first thing I do here in terms of connecting down to my lower lash line. Just a little bit, just right under the wing is where I'm taking that. You are the shadow beneath my wings. It's my new single coming out this summer. This shade here is called Jealous, so this uh, green. I'm going to pick that up on my angled brush as well. And then this is going to be our pretty lower lash line pop. And I'm going to take it just all the way in, first with this uh, stiff angled brush. You guys, I lost my pencil brush. I don't know where it is. It was like I talked about it in a favorites video a couple months back. Can't find the thing for the life of me. I don't know where where it went. Like, did when I was downstairs doing my makeup one day, did Belle, like, take it and put it into some secret stash? I don't know. Uh, but I'm using the smudge brush. This is an E21 from Sigma. And same shade, I'm just kind of softening it and, and pulling it down and out slightly. Shearing this color out kind of helps you see it more, you know? Really like it alongside that particular liner in the lower inner rim. Okay guys, so there's the eye look. I added some mascara and some false lashes. False lashes, I can't remember the exact style, but they're very, very similar to the Red Cherry number 43s. So I enjoy that eye look so much. I think it's gorgeous. I think some shades, you know, applied a little more strongly than others. I feel like within these palettes, they have like some shades with sort of a metallic finish. And then some shades that have like a little bit of sparkle in them. And those shades seem to be looser, a little bit harder to control on the eyes. And even some of the shades that I thought should have been like a no-brainer super duper smooth judging by how they swatched like this gold right here you know you had to kind of pack that on and work with it some so while it's not necessarily my most dream palette you know in terms of texture and formula of all these shades I do really enjoy the color variety because there are about a zillion different ways you can go with this I mean you could see before I even put the green on I had this beautiful warm kind of sunset vibe on the eyes and I could have stopped there but then I didn't even begin to go into the blues or the purple and there's also a really smoky purple down here so the variety for this palette is just off the charts and for its size to have that much variety I think that's pretty cool for lips I have a couple of different products one that I'll just talk about here first I got one of their lipsticks and the packaging is just too cute. Um, it's like rose gold and then you can see this floral print but it's in like little rings all the way around the tube so that's gorgeous. Can't take anything away from that. You got the little brand logo there. It's probably so shiny you can't even see it. And then there's the lipstick. There's a little bitty bird imprint on the lipstick itself. This shade is called Blood Flower and I did wear this the other day. I'll pop up a picture. It's super bold, ultra pigmented, classic cream lipstick. There's no shimmer in this. It's definitely a blue based red. Makes your teeth look super duper white. Um, I like it. I thought it looked gorgeous on. It does have that little bit of shine, but it doesn't take long for the shine to wear down. Not the whole color, but just the shine from this red wears down as you would expect. But this really is the type of color that's going to stain your lips. You know, it, it has a lot of intensity. It wore through most of the day actually looking pretty decent. I mean, to make it it look its freshest I'd obviously want to reapply but all this being said I've got a lot of red lipsticks and once I get past the really cute packaging you know do I like this formula better than Besame or better than Bite let's say it's not as uh, moisturizing feeling as Bite and the Besame lipsticks what I like about those is that they've got I think a little more thickness to their formula than just the average lipstick out there and I just really like the way they feel on my lips and the way they wear this is good um, but I don't don't know like I said beyond the packaging I'm not sure how much I'm actually going to reach for this particular lipstick. The other lip product that you'll be seeing in this video is a little more neutral. I got one of their liquid lipsticks. It's the, called My Lips Are Sealed and this shade, gosh the print is tiny. This shade is called Secret Sabotage and this is kind of like their nude of the collection. We've sort of been taught that a lot of liquid lipsticks set to a budge proof type finish. This is not like that. It's kind of like a very opaque lip 
whipped cream. It can totally, you know, come off. It's just not going to completely set on your lips. But this is like totally metallic. And for it being such a light shade, it looks even more metallic on my lips. Okay, I'm going to throw this description at you fans of the movie Clueless. <laughs> Didn't they refer to uh, people as a Monet at one point? Like from a distance, it looks great. And then you get up close and you're kind of like, Ugh. that movie, I need to watch that again sometime. But I, when I look up close at my lips and I'm not like stretching my lips out like that, um, my God, the lines, you know, it just, I, I don't think metallic lip colors are the most flattering thing. Now, just the feel, if we're just talking feel on the lips, it feels really great. Like it's totally creamy. I mean, it's, think of it as just a thickened up gloss, super opaque, but can definitely, you know, come right off your lips. And I don't think it's doing anything to really complement this particular eye look because of all the warmth here. You know, I could have used something maybe a little bit warmer on my lips. I'm actually going to pull in a little bit of this bite crayon. Now that you You've seen this color on my lips. This is in the shade called Sable. I'm gonna add a little bit of this kind of around the outside. For future use, I may use it to kind of like pop um, some looks in the center of the lower lip, but in terms of being worn just solely on its own all over my lips, I'm not really a fan. So yeah, pretty vulgar. New brand at Sephora. My overall take here, just real quick, the foundation is probably my least favorite thing that I've tried. I just, it's, it's so similar in function to the It Cosmetics CC Cream, but that product has way more going for it. It's got the SPF, which if I'm gonna double up as my moisturizer for a product like this, I'm going to want the SPF included. And it's just better coverage, better staying power throughout the day. So on a lot of fronts, I think it beats this one out for sure. The concealer I actually like. Concealer is one of my favorite things that I've used. It's nice coverage. It is kind of moisturizing feeling without being sticky. It doesn't like beg to be set, but I think a little setting powder does help it as it goes throughout the day. And it doesn't like just have that appearance of drying me out. Surprise nice coverage, so I am a fan of that. While I think the blush is nice, and I think I picked a shade that would kind of universally work alongside any of the eye palettes I got, I think it's nice, it's pigmented, it's a good formula, but I don't see it as a total must-have. It's not like crazy unique. Um, maybe there is another shade in their line that would really knock my socks off, but this one isn't just like, wow, that's a total must. I didn't touch on the packaging of the liquid lipstick, but look at that. I mean, you can't argue with the packaging. Packaging. If you like the ultra feminine look to things, you know, if you like birds and flowers, like you're gonna love the way these products look. Here's the way I come away feeling after trying both of these lip products. It's like, okay, I've had my fill. I don't feel like I need to go explore and try a bunch more of these lipsticks. I'm not really compelled to buy a bunch more of these metallic, like liquid lipstick things. But I see these as good, decent lip products, but not totally exceptional. Now the eyeshadow palettes. I wanna talk a little bit more about all three of them. Them. Pretty Birdie was the one that you saw me use in this video. This is definitely my favorite because it's the most unique. It's not an overall formula that I think is completely flawless. Like I said, Viseart is a tough act to follow. All of their shimmers are great. Their mattes are great. It's just a very much what you see is what you get type brand and it's a really impeccable formula. And so when I look at this stuff, I want so much to have that same consistency. But don't get me wrong, I think these are really good shadows. They're just not the best I've ever tried. But this palette, for all of the fun color variety that's in here, all of the different looks you could get, like I could use this for weeks and turn out a different look every day. So that's my favorite. This is the one that I think really sets itself apart. Then you've got this one called Early Bird. I really think it's cool how they did a completely different, um, you know, design to the packaging of each of these, but then the layout on the inside is the same. Now this is beautiful, okay? I look at this and I think, yes, that's a color scheme. Scheme I can get behind and enjoy wearing any day of the week. But if you went and got that Too Faced Natural Love palette, this is so similar to that color scheme with the mauves, you know, hint of pink type shades, a little bit peachy, a variety of browns right down here. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's also not like sending me over the edge to be like, yes, this is different and unique and awesome. I'm gonna keep using this thing. Please let me know if you're interested in seeing further looks
looks from this brand and I can bust something out with this. Talking about the eyeshadows just across all palettes, I think I've enjoyed the mattes that I've tried the most. And the shimmery shades can be a bit more hit and miss. Some are like ultra smooth, metallic, nice, and then there are some that just require more work, more packing on, more carefulness as you're trying to apply them. And then the other eyeshadow palette here is called Nightingale. And this one's very cool and very smoky. Um, it reminds me in some ways of like a naked palette. Just with the certain shades that happen to be matte here, there's kind of a dark borderline bluish color, a dark matte brown. I mean, there are some fantastic basics here and look at all these rich dark shades here. These are intense and those can be really nice used as eyeliner. But I think in both the Nightingale palette and the Early Bird palette, you're really confined to just one certain kind of color scheme. You know, this one's going to come off cool and pretty smoky and this one's going to have like your pinks as your accent type color and then a lot of brown worked in alongside it. Pretty Birdie, as I said, total wild card. That could be a neutral look easily. I mean, if you were traveling with this and you got a work trip, let's say, and you need a neutral look, you can completely do that. Like the gold, the creams, this taupe, but then you want to play it up for nighttime and do something wild. Like you are completely equipped to do that also. So the two best things that I've tried probably would be, where is it? That concealer and the Pretty Birdie palette. Those are my two favorites, but please keep in mind, I have not tried like everything this brand has to offer. I didn't even dip into the eyeliners, mascaras, um, brow products. I can't even remember if they had one. They probably did. I think quality wise, they do have some really good things going on. The packaging is spectacular. I think it's very easy to get sucked in by the look of a lot of these products. But for me, this line isn't like 100% loaded with must-haves from what I can tell so far. So thank you guys so much for taking time to watch. I hope this was informative for you and I will see you again very soon. Bye!